Uh, good morning and Happy New Year. We're at Matthew 26, 6 through 13. When Jesus was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came up to him with an alabaster flask of very expensive ointment, and she poured it on his head as he reclined at the table. When the disciples saw it, they were indignant, saying, Why this waste? For this could have been sold for a large sum and given to the poor. But Jesus, aware of this, said to them, Why do you trouble this woman? She has done a beautiful thing to me. For you always have the poor with you, but you will not always have me. In pouring this ointment on my body, she has done it to prepare me for burial. Truly, I say to you, whenever this gospel is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. So we know this story, and it comes in various gospels and various versions. Um, a woman comes into the house and anoints Jesus with this expensive oil. Now, in those days, one of the things you did if you had the the money the, is you poured ointments and oils and stuff on your hair to slick it back and, and make it smell good and and be beautiful. And this was just sort of the uh, the style, I guess you could say. And so she comes in with this little flask of very expensive stuff, pours it on his head. The disciples get angry. This could have been sold and given to the poor. Um, and Jesus says, well, you'll always have the poor, but you won't always have me. How many times have you heard someone say, well, you'll always have the poor. The poor will always be with you. And, and it's like, don't worry about the poor. They're going to be here. We don't have to deal with them because they'll always be poor. That's not, I think, what Jesus intends us to do with that statement. Uh, he says, you, you know, they'll always be here. I won't. And so that's what he's talking about. Um, you know, in one church, we did some renovations and we, we uh, spent about $600,000 on a new, beautiful pipe organ. We had money that was designated for a pipe organ. We had a pipe organ that was eh, not so good. So the decision was made to go ahead and take that money, which was designated for pipe organ, and buy a pipe organ. That's what we did. We got a very fine organ. Pretty late in that process, one of the hurricanes hit the Gulf Coast, and one of our fellows was involved in, in some of the relief efforts, and he wrote a letter and said, what we should do is take like 400,000 of that and give it to these people down there whose church was destroyed so they can rebuild their church and we can buy an electronic organ. Not a bad plan, not a bad idea at all. And I wrote this guy back and I said, that's a great idea. However, a train has left the station on this. It was designated for a pipe organ. A pipe organ's been ordered, you know, it's too late. Um, so my point is, sometimes in the church, we want to we want to go cheap, you know. We'll buy we'll, you know, we'll just get the the cheapest electronic organ we can buy, because we wouldn't want to spend too much on ourselves. Uh, and I've really gotten tired over the years of hearing hearing about what we spend on ourselves versus what we spend for mission. I think it's a false dichotomy and I think people, um, I don't know, people say it. Some people want to start fights and other people just just have been bred this way. They, they think that if we're using the money locally on ourselves that it's bad. And I don't think it's bad. Um, in that case, we ended up with a beautiful instrument, um, almost as good as the one at Newton. And it was um, used very well to um, provide the community with beautiful music and, and did a great job with, with our worship services. Um, so uh, there were no complaints, I don't think, except that it was played too loudly sometimes, but you always have that complaint, don't you? So, so what they do for Jesus is, is pour this ointment on him 
yes, it could have been given to the poor, but this is, after all, Jesus, and we're going to do this for him. Prepares him for his burial, he says, which they don't realize, but that's coming in about two days. So um, he doesn't really have a lot of time left. I think this dinner took place in the night before uh, Monday, Thursday, maybe on on Wednesday, um, and so things are things are getting very close. There's not much time left, and he knows this, and he knows that what she's done um, was a sacrificial thing on her part and a good thing, and um, and he appreciates it, and says she'll be remembered for for generations um, whenever this gospel is told. And indeed, we do remember her. We don't know her name, but we remember her her incredible sacrificial act of uh, devotion and piety. So, have a happy new year, and we will see you uh, Monday morning.